Hey guys, welcome back to another lecture video for Chem 115. In this video, we will derive the henderson hasebach equation and learn how to apply the equation in various ways. Also, we will discuss how to choose a buffer system for a desired pH. So let's go ahead and start. Now in our survey of acid-base equilibrium, uh, we've learned how to write the mass action expression for the ionization of a weak acid and the ionization of a weak base. So looking at this um, general form that I've, I've written for the weak acid, I'm representing the weak acid as capital H, capital A. And if I um, ionize it, in other words, I'm going in the forward direction with respect to this chemical equation, um, I'm going to produce H plus and A minus. And A minus is going to represent the conjugate base. And so if you guys recall from uh, the last lecture video, a buffer is composed of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. So what we're going to do is create an equation that describes the relative ratio of acid to base and use that equation and apply it to buffers. And so this is basically the derivation of the henderson hasebach equation. And so the first part in the derivation of the, the henderson hasebach equation is to write the mass action expression for either Ka or Kb. In this scenario, I'm just going to do it for Ka. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, separate out the components in this mass action expression. So we're basically going to split the, um, the, the fraction into two. And so here we have the uh, acid ionization constant is equal to the concentration of H+. Plus. Divide this by 1 times this by the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. Okay. And so notice I, I didn't really do anything to, to this mass action expression. If I multiply these two components and these two components, I'll get the same equation as above. And so the next thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to erase this uh, one at the, in the denominator, and that's okay because anything um, that's typically not written, we can assume that there's a one underneath it. And so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the log of both sides. And so I'm going to take the log of Ka, and I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and take the log of this whole expression. And so whenever you take the log um, and it's the terms are being separated by a multiplication sign, uh, that's going to be equivalent to an addition. And so here we have the log of Ka is equal to the log of the concentration of H plus plus the log of the concentration of A minus, divide this by the concentration of HA. Okay. So this is just a property of log. Um, so if two components are being multiplied and you want to um, take the log of it, you guys can go ahead and express it as an addition. And so the log of the first component plus the log of the second component. Okay. And so uh, I want to go ahead and look at this part. This part should be very familiar to us. If you guys recall, the pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of H+. And so since I have the log of H plus, I'm going to go ahead 
and solve for the log of h plus. In other words, I'm simply going to move that negative to the other side. So I get negative pH is equal to the log, oops, the log of concentration of H plus. And I'm going to go ahead and um, plug this term, this negative pH, into log of concentration of H plus in my equation. And so what I get is negative pH here, plus the log of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. Okay. Now, if you look at this term, log of Ka, uh, it's not as familiar to us, but um, uh, it should be uh, if you've used that equation um, several times to determine the pKa. And so if you look at that, if you look at the definition of pKa, that's equal to the negative log of Ka. And so very similar to what we did for pH, we're going to go ahead and move that negative to the other side by dividing it by negative 1. And we're going to get negative pKa is equal to log of Ka. And so since log of Ka is found in my expression over here, um, log of Ka is equal to negative pKa. And so I'm going to simply substitute log of Ka by putting in negative pKa. Okay. Now, if I want to get rid of my negatives, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add pH to the opposite side so that all of my values um, are positive. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same. I'm going to move that pKa to the opposite side. And so what I have is pH is equal to positive of pKa plus log of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. And so this is known as the Henderson Hasselbach equation. Okay. Now Notice that um, this is just specifically for pH. You guys can also perform the same type of derivation for pOH. However, for pOH, you guys are starting from the ionization of a base. Um, and so uh, your equation, the equation that you guys would start off with would be like B minus um, plus H2O liquid equals or is an equilibrium to produce um, HB and OH minus, right? And so here in this case, uh, this B minus is going to represent the weak base. And this HB is going to represent uh, the conjugate acid. And so you guys can go ahead and derive the henderson hasselbach uh, equation on your own um, for a weak base, but long story short, the pOH is equal to pKB plus the, constant, plus the log of the concentration of HB over B minus. Right. And so um, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the uh, pH form of the henderson hasselbach equation. And we're going to go ahead and decompose its components just so we know how to use it in different scenarios. Um, and so if you guys are looking at this portion of the henderson hasselbach equation, notice that the numerator, 
let me just erase this part. So the numerator part of this fraction is describing the concentration of the weak acid, um, sorry, the, the conjugate base of the weak acid. And the denominator, uh, that component of the sub that the identity of the substance is describing the concentration of the weak acid. Okay. And so if you guys recall, concentration is units of molarity. Okay. So what that tells us is that we need to have the molarity in the numerator of the conjugate base and the molarity of the denominator for the weak acid. Or at least that's what one would like you to think. Um, so looking at this equation one last time, so pH is equal to pKa plus log. Remember that molarity has, um, can be broken down into two other units. It can be broken down in terms of moles um, and over volume. So molarity is mol uh, moles over volume. And so if we're trying to um, express the other way to express molarity, and here we have a minus, but it's going to be moles per liter. Oops. Let me go up higher. So moles per liter. HA can also be expressed as moles per liter. <clears throat> and so even though the that even though there's brackets around um, the concentration of the conjugate base and that of the weak acid, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to convert everything in terms of molarity. And you guys will see in the next video that sometimes it's better to express it in a, in a different unit such as moles. And so um, <clears throat> if you guys are looking at this equation, notice that since there are ratios of two molarity values, we can go ahead and cancel out liters. And we can also just express the amount in terms of moles and not molarity. And so moles of A minus and moles of HA. And so this is something that we can uh, utilize, especially when you're talking about a neutralization reaction, which we're going to talk about a little bit more deeply in the following lecture videos. And so uh, the same can be said if you guys are using the POH. Uh, the POH, this is representing molarity. But it's not exclusive, right? So you can also uh, <clears throat> express the henderson hasselbach e uh, equation in terms of moles. So POH is equal to pKb plus the log of the moles of the conjugate acid over the moles of the conjugate, or I'm sorry, of the weak base. And so the only difference um, between the henderson hasselbach for POH and the pH is the location of the acid and its conjugate base, or the base and its um, conjugate acid. And so here in this case, this is going to, since B minus is representing the weak base, the base is in the denominator if we're discussing it in terms of pOH. And the conjugate acid is going to be in the numerator. Okay. All right. And so now that we've taken uh, kind of a peek at uh, the henderson hasselbach equation, um, let's go ahead and, and see how we can apply this equation in different scenarios. 
All right, so let's go ahead and look at an example. So this is example number one. And we are going to calculate the pH of a buffer solution that contains 0 0.040 uh, moles of ammonium iodide and 0 0.030 moles of ammonia in a one liter flask. And they also told us that the base ionization constant is 1.0 times 10 to the negative five. And so since we are trying to determine the pH of a buffer solution, um, we're gonna go ahead and utilize the henderson hasselbalch equation. Uh, so the first step is to determine which version of henderson hasselbalch we're going to be using. And so since we're solving for pH, or we're trying to determine the pH, it just makes sense for us to use this form of the henderson hasselbalch equation. Now we can use this form, but you'll, you'll get pOH, and so you'll have to do like one extra step to convert from pOH to pH. And so since we're trying to determine the pH, um, according to the henderson hasselbalch equation, that's equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the weak acid, HA. All right, and so it says that we have 0 0.04 moles of ammonium iodide. And so I'm gonna go ahead and write off to the side what that means. Um, so if I have uh, 0 0.04 moles of ammonium iodide, I can go ahead and rewrite that as 0 0.040 moles of ammonium, which is NH4, and iodide, uh, that's just I. And we also have 0 0.030 moles of ammonia. And so here in this case, we have 0 0.030 moles of ammonia, which is NH3. Okay. And the total volume of this flask is 1.00 liters. Okay. And so if we wanted to um, convert these values in terms of concentration, we need to take that the number of moles and divide that by 1.00, okay? And so this um, question, if you guys read it just a little bit carefully, it already contains this number of moles and this uh, of ammonium iodide and this number of moles of ammonia and the total volume is 1.0 liter flask. Uh, for some problems that you guys will encounter, um, sometimes the problem will describe like an addition of something, something, something. And so therefore you might have to use the dilution equation M1V1 equals M2V2 to determine the new concentration. But I'm going to present all of this material to you such that you don't have to perform the dilution equation. Um, you can just do it through moles, which makes life a lot more simple. All right, so um, we need to determine which one is the acid and which one is the base. Uh, and so here in this case, if I take ammonium iodide, and if I imagine myself putting this in, in water, it's going to dissociate into NH4+, because that's our cation, and I-, because that is our anion. Now this NH4+, um, that is going to represent our weak acid. And I know it's an acid because uh, we have that telltale sign, there's a plus, that means that it has an extra proton. Um, and I know it's a weak acid, because 
I memorized the list of the common strong acids and NH4 plus is not one of them. And so I minus um, does not affect the pH of the solution. The reason why is because I minus is an anion of a strong acid. And that strong acid was HI. Okay. So anions of strong acids do not affect the pH of the solution. And so, um, in other words, that justifies me crossing this I minus out and not even thinking about it at all in terms of calculation. And so what this is really telling me is that I just have 0 0.040 moles of NH4. And if I divide this by 1.0 liters, the molar concentration of ammonium is going to be 0 0.040 molar of NH4 plus. And so since I've identified that NH4 plus is going to be my weak acid, I'm going to go ahead and place that value in the denominator. Okay. And so here in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in 0 0.040 molar in my denominator. So I have pH is equal to pKa plus the log of 0 0.040 molar. And so if you guys look at the um, chemical formula for ammonium and ammonia, uh, notice they have the same base structure, but they're only off by one hydrogen. And so it would make sense that ammonia would be the conjugate base of ammonium. And so if I were to take this value and divide it by 1.00 liters, I can get the value in molarity. And so here in this case, I have 0 0.030 molar concentration. Um, and just to um, be consistent with my notes, I'm going to put this as NH4 plus to remind me that it's my weak acid. And then this is going to be ammonia representing my weak base. Okay. Um, and so looking at this problem, remember I just want to figure out what the pH of the solution is. And so the last thing that I need to figure out is the pKa value. Uh, and so if I just if I can if I can get this number, then I can just plug everything into my calculator and I can determine the pH. Now uh, if you look at the last part of this problem, I'll hi highlight it in a different color. The base ionization constant is 1.80 times 10 to the negative 5. So if I wanted to translate that, uh, base ionization constant is representing Kb. And so that's equal to 1.80 times 10 to the negative 5. Well, we have a problem because this equation is calling for Ka and not Kb. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have to convert Kb into Ka. And once we convert into Ka, notice that we still cannot plug it into this equation just yet um, because uh, this value is supposed to represent the pKa. And so we're going to go from Ka to pKa. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off to the side over here. And so if my 
base ionization constant is equal to 1.080 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay. Um, I know that at 25 degrees Celsius, and I'm just going to go ahead and assume that we're at this temperature because the problem didn't say otherwise, um, the Ka times Kb is equal to Kw. And so Kw at 25 degrees um, is going to be 1.008 times 10 to the negative 14. And if I want to solve for Ka, I'm simply going to divide um, both sides by Kb. And so therefore Ka is going to equal to 1.008 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.008. 8, 0 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a little note here just so you guys can see that that's Kw and this was Kb. Alright, so if I plug this into my calculator I'm going to get so 1.008 times 10 to the negative 14, divide this by 1.80 times 10 to the negative 5. So that's going to give me a Ka value of 5.60 times 10 to the negative 10. Uh, so this is actually telling me that um, this specific substance it's, uh, if you look at the Ka and Kb value, it's more or less going to act as a base rather than an acid, right? Just because the uh, magnitude for Kb is higher than Ka. Okay. It's just a little note there. Okay, so now that I have my Ka, my, the last step is to convert this into pKa so that I can plug it into um, my equation. And so to determine the pKa, um, I'm just going to simply take the negative log of Ka. And how do I know I'm taking the negative log of it? Well, there's that p, right? So when you take the p of anything, you're taking the negative log of that specific substance or that specific item. And so if I take the negative log of this number, I am going to get, oops, um, 9.25181197. Now, if you guys look very closely, I took the negative log of a something. So this log is a specific function. <clears throat> and so therefore the sig figs kind of change. And so here I have three sig figs. And if I'm converting um, so I'm going to go from uh, pKa to Ka. Okay. So check this out. Hopefully this helps you guys. And so Ka has significant figures. And pKa, we're worried about the number of date, pl uh, places after the decimal that we have to report. And so if I see three sig figs, then I'm going to put three sig figs here. And so that tells me that I need that same number of decimal places. So hopefully that little trick helped. Um, and so that's going to tell me that I'm going to have to report three places past the decimal. So therefore my pKa, once it's correctly rounded, it's going to be 9.252. Okay. So now that I've figured out my pKa, I'm going to go ahead and plug that into, oops, so this is going to be 9.252. Okay. So
So if you look, I filled in all of the variables in my henderson hasselbalch equation. The only thing that is left is the pH. Um, and that's exactly what we want to find. So we're going to take the pH and that's going to equal to 9.252 plus the log of the concentration of 0 0.030 molar over 0 0.040 molar. Okay. Notice that molarity cancels out. Um, and so this is the reason why we can express the, the value in terms of moles or molarity, just because it's a ratio of the same two uh, unit. And so if I plug that into my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and do this portion first. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and divide 0 0.030 by 0 0.040. And this is going to give me the log of 0.75. And so if I take the log of that number, that value is going to be negative uh, 0.12. Okay. So notice how it's just two um, it's just two sig figs because there's, I mean, two places after the decimal because there's two sig figs here. So this is plus 9.252. So I'm just going to carry this down. And so if I add those two values, my predicted pH is going to be 9.127. All right. And so this is um, telling me that if I have a buffer that's composed of 0 0.030 molar of ammonia and 0 0.040 molar of ammonium, I am going to get a pH of 9.127. So if this is the concentration of each individual component of my buffer system, I am going to get a pH of 9.127. And so I want to go ahead and take another um, look at the, the last couple steps here. So um, I want you guys to notice that the concentration of the acid kind of dominates, right? So we have more acid than our base, than our conjugate base. And so if the pKa is 9.252, then since we have more of the acid, then it should decrease our pH, right? And it makes sense. See, here we have a decrease in the pH from 9.252. Uh, the reason why is, once again, we have more acid than the base. And so the, the relative ratio of the weak acid and conjugate base describes the overall change that's going to occur to produce the, P, the, the final pH. Okay. All right. Um, and so if you guys wanted to do this in terms of moles, so for instance, instead of molarity, it's in moles, we didn't divide it by one, you're going to get the same answer. And so once again, it highlights the fact that we can use either moles or molarity uh, in the henderson hasselbalch equation. All right, so let's go ahead and go over another problem. <clears throat> so in this example, if the pH of a buffered solution is 6.75, uh, 
we're going to determine the ratio of the weak acid to its conjugate base. And so we didn't really, spe it didn't really specify the exact chemical formula for the weak acid, rather it's just giving us a generic formula. In this case, uh, they gave us the Ka value as 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7. All right, and so let's go ahead and um, uh, look at this equation just a little bit more. <clears throat> so here they gave us the pH. The pH is equal to 6.75. And so what we're looking for is the ratio of the weak acid to its conjugate base. And so since they gave us pH, it just makes sense for us to use pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the weak acid. And so looking at this um, henderson hasselbalch equation, if we're trying to figure out the ratio of the weak acid to the conjugate base, what we're solving for is this whole entire term. And so when we talk about solution preparation, we can utilize this ratio to give us, um, to help us determine how many moles, or I'm sorry, how many like grams and how much volume we need of uh, each specific substance to create uh, a certain concentration of buffer at a certain pH. And we'll look at that in the next video. Okay, and so for now we're going to go ahead and replace six, uh, pH with 6.75. And when we take the pKa, what we're going to do is take the negative log of the Ka. And so the negative log of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7 is equal to some value. And that's going to give us the log of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. Okay. Now, if we, express in, if we express this into our calculator, we have the negative log of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7. That's going to give us um, 6.376, 7, and then 5, and there's a whole bunch of numbers. Uh, once again, let's think about the sig figs. And so this is a, um, a Ka value. And so since there are two sig figs, so I'll just do this at the bottom. So Ka has two sig figs. And so therefore, the pKa must have two decimal places. Okay. And so what that means is that we're just going to record up to the 7, but we need to make sure it's rounded properly. And so um, 6.75 is equal to 6.38 plus the log of the conjugate base over the weak acid. Oops. And so now we're going to go ahead and just solve for this ratio. So we're going to get rid of 6.38 first. Okay. And so when we take 6.75 and we subtract that by 6.38, what we get is 0.38. Okay. And that's going to give us the log of the ratio of the conjugate base to that of the weak acid. And so to get rid of the, the log, we need to um, perform the anti-log. And so here we're going to take the base 10 of 0.38. Okay. 
And so um, this is going to be 2 point 3988832 and there's a whole bunch of other numbers and that's going to give us um, the ratio of the conjugate base over the conjugate acid okay. and so since we're going from um, a p-value back to uh, concentration, we need to think about significant digits. And so here, there are two decimal places. Because okay, remember, this, this value, the difference, stemmed from uh, the difference between pH and pKa. And so what that means is that we need to report only two sig figs. And so the ratio, oops, is going to be 2.4. And so um, that's pretty much it mathematically in terms of solving this problem. Uh, but if you guys take a look, um, if I multiply the concentration of HA to the other side, in other words, I'm solving for A minus, the concentration of A minus is equal to 2.4 times that by the concentration of HA. And so I need 2.4 times the concentration of HA for um, me to get only you know one of the concentration of the base of the conjugate base. So uh, this is telling me okay uh, where is it where is it where is it where is it okay and so if you guys look at this value. So the value for pKa is 6.38. Okay. And if I look at the target pH, so you can imagine the pKa as like my reference point. So this is like in Monopoly, this is the go space, right? So this is where you guys start. Um, and what's going to change this, um, uh, the, the pKa value is the ratio of the conjugate base of the conjugate acid. And so if you guys look at the result, the result was 6.75. And so since the pH is greater than the pKa, that means that uh, we needed to add more base to the pKa so that its pH is much higher than it. Um, and so just, just think about your, um, just think about the pH scale, All right? And so let's just say that this is my pKa, which is 6.38. Uh, 6.75 is higher on this pH scale. And so if I'm increasing the pH, that tells me that I need more conjugate base than conjugate acid. Okay. And that's what, it's, uh, that's what this ratio is telling us. I need uh, two point, oh, almost 2.5, right? So 2.4 times the acid for me to increase my pKa to a pH of 6.75. Okay. So hopefully you guys um, kind of understood uh, that derivation. I should have written this stuff um, right underneath it. It kind of got messy. Okay. 
And so overall for me to go from 6.75, I'm sorry, so for me to start, so this is my pKa, which is my starting point, if you will. And since my starting point was um, 6.38, I'm increasing the pH. And the only way to increase the pH is to add more conjugate base. Okay. And this is the reason why we're almost uh, we're multiplying the, the concentration of the weak acid by 2.4. All right, so um, we're going to kind of table the, the um, other concepts that's tied into this whole ratio for the next lecture video. Right now, my main point is for you to understand how to use the henderson hasselbach equation and what that means um, instead of just like looking at, it as, looking at it as a result and as a number. All right. Um, so another way for us to use the henderson hasselbach equation um, is to determine the pH. However, this time we're not given concentration or moles, we're given grams, right? So if the pH of the carbonic acid buffer is 7.80, so I apologize, we're not looking for a pH, the pH is already given to us. So the pH is 7.80. Okay, what is the concentration of the conjugate base if 68.2 grams of carbonic acid is dissolved to make a 2.00 liter solution? And so the pKb is 7.62. So you guys can imagine that uh, if you if you dissolved, oops. So let's just say that you have a, this 2.00 liter solution and you have 68.2 grams of carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. Since carbonic is a weak acid, um, <clears throat> it's going some a small fraction of it is going to dissociate to produce the conjugate base and so it turns out that the pH is 7.80 and so if the pH is 7.0 what is the concentration of the conjugate base and so once again we can go ahead and figure this out by using the henderson hasselbach equation um, so here we have pH is equal to pKa and for these three examples, I've been using pH is equal to pKa, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, um, the, the same type of logic and thought process and calculation applies for pOH and pKb. So the log of the ratio of the conjugate base over the conjugate acid. All right. And so since we have the pH, uh, it's given to us, that's 7.80. Um, here we want to use the pKa if we're using this equation, uh, but here we have a problem. The, they gave us the pKb. Now, if you guys recall, pKa plus pKb at 25 degrees Celsius is uh, equal to 14, right? And so if my pKa, is, I'm sorry, if my pKb is 7.62, I can go ahead and solve for my pKa by subtracting it to the other side. Okay. And so if I were to take 14 and subtract that by 7.62.
I am going to get a pKa of 6.38. And so this is going to be 6.38 plus log of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. <clears throat> and so looking at the question, what is the concentration of the conjugate base, what we're solving for here is going to be a minus in molarity units. And so for me to solve um, this for molarity units, I need to know what the concentration of this acid is. And so carbonic acid is going to be 68.2 grams. There's going to be 68.2 grams of carbonic acid. Uh, and so even though it's a diprotic acid, um, recall that its second ionization is times 10 to the negative 11. And so we're going to treat it like a monoprotic acid. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to convert 68.2 grams of carbonic acid, convert it into moles, and then um, we're going to divide it by uh, 2 liters to determine the concentration. So if I have 68.2 grams of carbonic acid, I can go ahead and convert this to moles of carbonic acid by using its molar mass. And so since grams is up here, I'm going to put grams down here. Now if you um, were to calculate the uh, molar mass, so I'm going to go ahead and list out my components. So I have two hydrogen ions one carbon, and three oxygens. And so I'm going to multiply this by 1.008 grams per mole. So this is coming, this is the, mole, the atomic mass that's coming from the periodic table. Carbon is 12.011. And if I multiply this by 15.999, and all of this is grams per mole, and so what I'm going to do is multiply across and then add downward. So multiply and then add everything. And so it turns out that the um, molar mass, excuse me, of carbonic acid is going to be 62.024 grams per mole. Oops. And so if I were to extend this um, horizontal line, it kind of uh, shows me my conversion factor. So this 62 is associated to mass. So I'm going to put in 62.024. 024 in the denominator because that's where my mass is and I'm going to put one mole at the very top and So if I divide those two values so 68.2 divide this by 62.024 um, That is going to give me um, a mass Oops, I think I need to move this stuff over So that's going to give me, um, not a mass, I apologize, um, 1.0995, and then there's a whole bunch of numbers. Uh, this is moles of carbonic acid. And so here in this case, uh, since I need to report just three sig figs, um, I'm going to report the first three sig figs that I see here. And I'm going to go ahead and round the nine up. So that's going to give me 1.10 moles of carbonic acid. So now that I've figured out the number of moles, I need to convert this into molarity.
And so to convert this into molarity, I need to divide this value by two. So 1.10 moles, divide this by 2.00 liters. And then that's gonna give me a molar concentration of 0.5, uh, four, nine, oops. Seven, eight, seven, and there's a whole bunch of numbers. Uh, once again, three sig figs. And so I'm just gonna keep the first three sig figs that I see. The seven will round the nine up. And so the concentration of my carbonic acid, which is my weak acid, is going to be 0 0.550 molar. Okay. And so this is kind of like a throwback to the first semester of general chemistry. And so now that I've figured out that my molar concentration is 0 0.550 molar, I have all of the components that I need to figure out the concentration of my conjugate base. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, just copy this. over here so that way I'm not running into my other my previous work and I'm going to go ahead and substitute my carbonic acid which is my weak acid uh, 0.550 okay. all right um, all right so what I'm going to do is just solve for a minus so I'm going to move 6.38 to the other side, and to do so, I'm just going to subtract, so 7.80 minus 6.38, and then that's going to give me a value of 1.42, and that's going to equal to the log of the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the carbonic acid. And the identity of the... Um, conjugate base of carbonic acid is bicarbonate, by the way. Uh, I'm representing the bicarbonate as A-, minus, but if you want to write in bicarbonate, um, which is HCO3-, minus, that's going to be the conjugate base um, <clears throat> of carbonic acid. And so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break out the, the log. And so the, I'm going to take the anti-log of both sides. And so here I get a large number. I get 26.3020 uh, okay. um, And so remember that we're going from uh, something that's like pH or pKa related into an actual number that represents concentration. Uh, so here in this case, since I have two decimal places, that means I need to report two sig figs. Okay. Um, all right, so that's going to, oops. So that's gonna equal to the concentration of A minus times this by 0.550. So if I multiply that by 0 0.550, I'm actually going to get a very unrealistic value. That's such a high concentration. Um, and so here in this case, I have 14.4 uh, 14 14.46647, and there's a whole bunch of other numbers. That's going to give me the concentration of my conjugate base. And so this is... The, this concentration is it's, it's quite large. It's a very concentrated solution, but it also piggybacks off the concept of how much it would take for us to convert our pKa into pH. Um, and so since this is the concentration of the conjugate base, which was uh, carbonic acid, uh, we've kind of answered the question 
Um, and if you want to report the correct number of sig figs, then we would just go ahead and say 14 molar. So we need a four, the, we need a concentration of 14 for the carbonic, I'm sorry, for the bicarbonate to go from a pKa of 6.38 to a pH of 7.80. Um, and so once again, we're taking the pKa as our like starting point, if you will. And I'll explain um, this, this idea of pKa being our starting point in just a second. And uh, pH is going to be our desired outcome. And so if we're starting off to six at a six at six point three eight and we want a, a pH of seven point eight zero, we have to add since we're increasing in value, we're going to have to add more of the conjugate base to increase the pKa to the desired pH. Okay. And that's reflected by the concentration. So the concentration of bicarbonate is 14, but if you look at the concentration of our acid, it's going to be 0 0.550 molar concentration of carbonic acid. Okay, um, okay. so hopefully that gets your uh, mind thinking of how uh, pK is related to pH and uh, the actual reaction between you know, acids and base, right? Or at least the pH scale. Um, and so if we're increasing the pH value uh, or the P value, then that means we need to add more of the base. If it was reversed, if, we're, if our pK is 7.8 and if our pH is 6.38, then that means that we need more of the weak acid than the conjugate base to get it to that desired pH. All right, so let's go ahead and go through one last example for this lecture video. And then we're gonna go ahead and start talking about um, reactions with uh, buffered solutions. Okay, so that one's a little bit more challenging topic, but we'll all get through it. All right, so for number four, um, we have a chemist and this chemist needs a solution buffered at a pH of 4.30. Which of the following weak acids should they use? Okay. And so earlier I mentioned, um, I'm gonna talk about why pKa is going to be our uh, quote unquote starting point. So let's go ahead and revisit before we talk about um, example number four. Let's go ahead and revisit the henderson hasebach equation pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the weak acid. And so um, if you have, if the concentration of A minus is equal to the concentration of HA, in other words, if we have a one molar concentration of the conjugate base, and a one molar concentration of our um, weak acid, uh, if we plug this value, and it doesn't have to be one molar, it can be like any concentrations as long as they're the same. If we plug that into the, um, the, the, the brackets, we get log of one over one. And the log of one is equal to zero. And so this is a very um, special scenario. And so if the concentration of both your conjugate acid and its uh, conjugate base is equal, then therefore the pH is equal to the pKa. 
And we're gonna use this concept several times, once here for buffers and another time for titration curves. Um, and so this is the reason why I'm treating my pKa as kind of like my starting point. And so I'm going to uh, imagine that I have equal amounts of conjugate base and conjugate acid. And so if I have equal amounts of conjugate acid and conjugate base, then the pKa is equal to the pH. However, if the concentration of the conjugate base does not equal to the conjugate acid, then what that's going to do, it's going to shift this ratio, thereby changing that original starting point to an alternate or to another pH value. Um, and so hopefully that kind of, uh, this derivation kind of explains why I'm using pKa as my starting point. Um, it's my, pKa is quote unquote my pH starting point because in this scenario, the only way for pH to equal to pKa is if I have equal concentrations of conjugate base and the weak acid. And then once I start varying the concentrations of my conjugate base and my weak acid, then it's going to vary, it's gonna change my pKa to produce a different pH than when the concentrations of my conjugate base and my weak acid is equal. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and use that information to figure out uh, which weak acid should we use to create a buffered solution at 4.30? Okay. And so it turns out that um, for us to create a buffered system, so a good buffer system we'll have a pH is equal to pKa plus minus one, okay? And so if your um, pKa is within plus minus one pH unit of the desired pH value, then uh, that conjugate acid base system is preferred. And so I, I want to go ahead and take a step back real quick. Look at, let's look at our last calculation. So notice that um, the concentration of this conjugate base, let me, the concentration of this conjugate base is 14 molar. That's really, really concentrated. Uh, and um, we're trying to, uh, how do I say this? We're trying to get a desired pH of 7.80. And so if we start at 6.380, in other words, we have equal, equal amounts of acid to equal amounts of its conjugate base, uh, we would have to increase the concentration of the base so much so that we get the desired pH. And so in lab, uh, it kind of gets 
um, impractical because that means you have to bun you have to dump a whole bunch of um, weak base just to get it up to your desired pH. And so what you want to do is you want to choose a buffer system that's within plus minus one pH unit of your desired pH. Okay. And so that way, if you need to make any minor adjustments, in other words, change the ratio of the base, uh, the conjugate base and that of the weak acid, um, it's only like, you know, minute amounts. Uh, you don't have to like dump a whole bunch of stuff in uh, to get it to your desired pH. And so we want to work smart, not hard. Um, all right. And so since the pH, oops, what happened? And so since our desired pH is equal to 4.30, um, what we want to do is choose a pKa or choose a system, choose a weak acid. such that it's pKa is within plus minus one pH unit of the desired pH. So what that means is that we're going to have to take every single one of these Ka values and convert them into pKa. Um, and so to do that, we're just going to apply a simple definition. So remember that. Um, pKa is equal to negative log of Ka. So if we just take the negative log of all those numbers and then compare them to the desired pH, we can kind of choose which um, weak acid that will make a good buffered solution for a pH of 4.30. So negative log of 4.30 is going to be, oops, sorry. So um, for the first one, it's going to be the negative log of 1.35 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's going to give me my a pKa value of 2.870, um, so 870. And so I already rounded to the correct number of significant figures. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and take the next Ka value and take the negative log of it, so negative 1.3, I'm sorry, negative log of 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5. And so I'm going to get 4.886. Uh, so negative log of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 5. And so here I have 4.194. Oh, whoops. Actually, sig figs. So 4.8, what was that number? A nine. Okay. And so since I have two sig figs, I'm just going to erase that. Four. And then last but not least, I have negative log of 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay. And so that's going to give me um, a pKa of 7.46. Okay. All right. So Let's go ahead and look at our results. 
So the pK of chloracetic acid is going to be 2.870. So notice that the desired pH is 4.30. And so 2.870 is not within um, plus minus one pH unit of what we desire. And so if we use chloroacetic acid, we'll probably have to uh, dump a whole bunch of base um, to increase its pH from 2.870 to uh, 4.30. And it comes, it, probably there's a point where, you know, the system will get overwhelmed and just doesn't become a buffer anymore. Um, and so we don't really want to use the, uh, chloroacetic acid. And so if you look at hypochlorous acid, um, the pKa is 7.46. So if we have equal amounts of conjugate base and weak acid, uh, we get a pH of 7.46. And so if I want, if we want to bring it down to 4.30, we'll probably have to add a whole bunch of strong acid. So that probably is not going to help us out because that's more work than required. And at some point, we're going to surpass the buffer capacity. Uh, so if we look at these two values, um, 4.89, um, for propanoic acid and benzoic acid is going to be 4.19. Um, the desired pH is going to be 4.30. So it probably makes sense for us to use 4.19. Um, and not 4.89. Just because 4.19 is closer to 4.30. And so if um, my pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the conjugate base over the conjugate acid or the weak acid, okay. um, so basically I've already solved for the problem. I already determined that uh, we're going to be using benzoic acid because that's closest to the desired pH. But what I want to look at now is the ratio. So uh, roughly how much uh, acid and base uh, do I need to uh, get my pH, my desired pH to 4.30 from um, an initial pH, if you will, of 4.19. And so if I have equal amounts of uh, weak base and, or I'm sorry, conjugate conjugate base and weak acid, then I'll get a pH of 4.19. Uh, however, I'm going to vary that um, ratio so that I'm going to get my desired pH. Um, and so here in this case, if my pH is 4.30 and my pK is 4.19, I'll get a log of A minus over HA. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract to the other side. Uh, so this is going to give me 0.11 is equal to the log of A minus over HA. So if I take the anti-log of both sides, and so in my calculator, I'm hitting second log. Um, and then I'm going to put in 0.11. And that's going to give me 1.28, uh, concentration of A minus, over concentration of HA. Okay. And so if I multiply it to the other side, the concentration of the conjugate base must be one point, I'll round it up to the correct number of sig figs, um, 1.3. So whatever the concentration of my conjugate, uh, I'm sorry, whatever the, whatever the concentration is of my weak acid, uh, I need to multiply that concentration by 1.3 
to get the concentration of my weak base such that I'll get a pH, a desired pH of 4.30 from 4.19. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stop here. Um, in the next uh, video, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation again. And this time, we're going to perform a neutralization reaction. And we're going to quantify the change in pH if we add um, you know, an, a strong acid or a strong base uh, to a buffered solution. All right, see you guys in the next video.